there's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge because of all the populous trees which grow there. This is where we're from. We are the Popple People. Welcome to our channel. We're glad you stopped by. In this episode, we'll be taking a stab at building a unique custom door for our sauna. We've never built a door before, so we'll see how it goes. Our door ended up being a random 27 and 3 quarters inches wide, so not a standard size, which is what forced us to build a door rather than simply purchasing one for this project. We began with the styles. We started with a 2 by 12 board that we had left over from another project. That got ripped down into approximately six inch wide door styles. So our idea for the store is to build a rectangle out of two by sixes and then fill in the center opening with pieces of tongue and groove cedar planks that were left over from the interior of our sauna build. These scraps were mostly ends that were saved from when the walls went up in the sauna, so they were random sizes. We cut the tongue and groove cedar planks to the length we needed because it was a custom door width. Then we ran these through the planer on both sides to get a nice smooth surface because the backs were rough originally. Next, we worked on fabricating the rails. We actually did the cedar center planks before the rails because we wanted to lay out the styles and the center just to make sure we liked this look and to ensure that we had enough materials to complete the door the way we wanted. We decided to assemble this door by cutting a groove in the styles and then sliding the center planks into that. So that decision essentially shaped the rest of the rail design. It meant the rails would need tongues cut on both sides. So we used this setup to help cut custom tongues on the rails using the table saw. Would it work? Well, we were about to find out. The first series of cuts left us with this. Then we had to cut the two side portions off, leaving just the center tongue. Here goes nothing. Not sure if this was the proper way to do this, but it worked. So now we just had to try and dado grooves to match this. So the table saw blades were changed and we ran the styles through to cut the groove. We also needed to cut a groove in the rails so that the smaller center planks would be inset in the top and bottom rails as well as in the styles on the sides. This door was getting trickier by the minute, and we wondered if we should have just cut a piece of plywood to size, threw some hinges on it, but we were too far into it to abandon this door now. So the styles were cut to length, we checked to make sure the ends were straight and square, and then we tried assembling the rails and the styles to make sure that the tongues and grooves all fit. And by some miracle, everything fit, and it was square. Next, we did some measurements to determine placement of the screws that would secure the rails and styles to each other. We decided to countersink the screws into the styles, so those measurements were taken as well. 
Then, once we determined the depth for the holes, the wood spade drill bit was marked with tape, so we drilled in far enough, but not too deep, into the styles. The edges of the styles were measured and marked, and then the holes were drilled out. Next, the 12 inch long drill bit was taped to mark the proper depth for pre-drilling the holes into the rails and styles. Once all the holes were drilled, the center cedar planks were assembled with the styles. You might notice the rubber mallet is inside a sock. That's to prevent it from leaving black marks on all the wood. Patience was definitely required for this part. After all the parts were assembled, we rechecked it again, and by some miracle, even after all that banging around, it was still square. We had only put in one screw just to tack everything together in case any adjustments needed to be made, so now the rest of the screws were driven in. We also decided to shoot a few brad nails in just to secure the center planks in place so nothing shifted. So at this point, our first door was finally assembled. Now we just needed to notch out places for the hinges. And after that, we have a whole new appreciation for pre-hung doors. This was tedious. Once the holes in the door jam were pre-drilled, this door was ready to be hung. Um, this was also a pretty tedious process, but it worked out really well. This door turned out great. Next, the door stop moldings were cut and installed. This is smooth. It really did turn out better than expected.
Then trim was installed on the sauna side of the door only. We'll trim out the asser side of the door once all of that shiplap is finished on the wall. Finally, we needed a door handle, and I had the perfect branch for it. I found this little gem in the woods last summer. Cut it down. I just had to have it. So I dragged it home, peeled the bark off, and it's been waiting for just such an occasion. A skill saw was used to square up the ends. Holes were pre-drilled from the sauna side of the door, and this beauty was screwed on. If you have questions, email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com. Or flip plop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll finally finish up with our sauna build. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to follow our journey, please consider subscribing. That way, you can be a Popple People too. We'll catch you next time. Bye.